I command healings of all kind right now. At the count of seven, do what you put into the name of Jesus. I reverse the power working against you. Jesus mighty name. You notice that a part of your what you call impossibility is impossibility before the God you serve. That thing that the world has used to laugh at you, it will become a testimony. It is your faith that will see you through your widows. I release the miracles of your need into your hands this morning. Somebody shout, it is mine. I don't know what you are going through tonight. I don't know why certain attacks have been consistent in your life. But tonight, as you lift up your hand, we nullify the attacks of the wicked one. Every attack that has been persistent, consistent in your life, we nullify it in Jesus' name. What are the signs? Signs that shows that spirits have been aggrieved because you backed out. Number one, aggressive attacks, like I just told you. Because these spirits come after you like wounded lions. Aggressive attacks. Aggressive attacks. Number two, you will begin to experience affliction. Sometimes insanity can become a resultant factor. That's why people who dabble into the occult and then say that they, later they withdraw. Sickness. Some strange medical conditions. Then strange demonic hindrances. They are expressing barrier. Everything they try to do, barriers. Premature death in some cases. And then we have strange weird dreams. Strange weird dreams. Weird dreams where you find yourself being chased by some strange spirit. They've come after you. We're going to pray some prayers. In the next few minutes, I want you to stand on your feet. Say, Lord, Lord deliver me deliver. from every demonic war that I've attracted into my life by my foolishness in the name of Jesus. Jam your hands and begin to break, destroy every demonic war in the life of your children, in your life, in your business. Jam your hands, everybody. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Listen to me. See, as much as we're going to be ministering to you tonight, you must open up your heart to pray. I told you that on Thursday. You must be ready to pray. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? How many of you have prayed strong, aggressive prayer the last one year? Many of you are standing here tonight. You have never prayed. Never prayed. That's why some strange things are still consistent in your life. Tonight we are here again. You can't pray. Whatever power that will not allow you to pray, I break it from your life in Jesus' name. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 50, verse 7. Isaiah 53 verse 7. Say, he was oppressed and afflicted and he opened not his mouth. Once you are oppressed or you are afflicted and you refuse to open your mouth, you are programmed yourself for slaughter. The Bible says he was like a sheep before her sharers he stung so he opened not his mouth he was oppressed and afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he's brought as a lamb to the slaughter anyone that is being taken for slaughter tonight we deliver you in Jesus name I said we deliver you in the name of Jesus we deliver you in the name of Jesus a closed mouth is a closed destiny listen to me you might not be the one that did it it could be your mother your mother must have stepped into some place. Ah, my picking for Lagos is not doing well. I'm tired. Year after year, no study. She went somewhere, started something, she didn't finish it. But she had already entered the contract. She mentioned your name. Legally, she has a right to introduce anything to your life because she's your mother. She can bless you. She can drag you to a thing. She can tie you. Don't, don't. When we are praying this prayer, you don't just look at it as if, well, this does not relate to me. If it didn't relate to you, God has brought you here. It's a revelation. Listen to me. Even though you are not involved, there's no harm there's no loss if, if you even pray and you are not involved but let's assume you are involved as you begin to pray you have been disengaging from such battles 
I say you are disengaging from such battles. I say you are disengaging from such battles. Pray this prayer. Say, I renounce vows and promises made before any demonic altar. In Jesus' name. I renounce it. I renounce it. Vows, promises made before any demonic altar. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I renounce vows, promises made before any demonic altar. In the name of Jesus. Jam your hands and pray. Prayer. 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 Eka bas eke pala. Lebola bosa toto to bosa. Eta ta ta ta. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Say this with me. Aggressive and fierce attacks. Target at, targeted at me. From wounded demons. Quenched by fire. In the name of Jesus. Aggressive and fierce attacks. Targeted at me from wounded demons. Quenched by fire in the name of Jesus. Pray everybody open your mouth. Aggressive and fierce attacks. Targeted at me from my wounded demons. Prayer, 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 prayer. Atolo bokoso. Etala kaposara. In Jesus they will pray. Any sickness in your body, lift up your hand. Any sickness in your body. Any disease in your body. As a result of such transaction, we command it to disappear. We command it to disappear. We command it to disappear. Any battle that you have been fighting as a result of this, we command the battles to cease. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. It's your time and day of recovery. A Sovereign Word Church presents Day of Recovery. It's taking place on Sunday, July 14, starting by 3 p.m. at Oromino Hall, Airport Hotel, Ikeja, Lagos. All sick people should endeavor to come with a medical report and a second party assistant for the prayer line. Your roast, Dr. Antonio and Pastor Mrs. Lucy Oko. Every sickness, every disease has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy your productive years in life. And I believe as you come, you will throw away the crutches, push the witches away, remove the AIDS, the hearing AIDS, whatever. I trust God as you come, your life will never be the same. 13th of July, it's your day of recovery. For seat reservation for the sake, call 0802-441-3213. Sovereign World Church, where life's pains are healed. Jesus name how do you neutralize such a thing if you are here tonight you are guilty of this teaching all you need to do first of all is to seek for deliverance tonight seek for deliverance seek for deliverance when we begin to conduct deliverance be, be hungry be open seek for it seek for deliverance many people in the corporate industry in a desperate need to meet with targets they are follow friends to certain altars ah there's a place we go for prayer okay it's not everywhere they call Jesus. They really mean Jesus. There's a popular footballer. His name is Jesus. It's the spirit behind the name. It's the spirit behind the name. It's the spirit behind the name. Lift up your hand. Any transaction. Any transaction. Any transaction. That have tied me to strange powers. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. I renounce you.
Lord in our hoof rest. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Broken promises. Broken promises. For Samuel chapter 1 verse 11. And the Bible says, And she vowed a vow and said O lord of hosts if thou will indeed look on the affliction of my of the handmaid remember me and not forget the handmaid but we give unto the handmaid a man child then i will give him unto the lord all the days of his life she vowed there are many people going to different altars to vow hannah went to the altar of god and vowed samuel and let me show you the implication of a vow when the boy grew up before age seven the spirit that the child was vowed to began to call his name transactions of the altars are sensitive you go to a church you make a vow lord i'm going to give you a hundred thousand if i got a job you got a job what happened you never went back there there are many of you here tonight you have offended a lot of pastors and the pastors have cost you and that's the truth there are many of you here sitting here you went to some men of god at certain point in time and you you opened up to them they prayed fasted for you and you vowed if i get this job half of my salary i'll give and the job came the spirit that works with the pastor because behind every man that is called there are spirits that are assigned to work with them they heard you when you made the vow you were desperate they prayed recently a young man was telling me a pastor he came to see me two weeks ago he was in tears he told me about a politician politicians are very guilty of this how a politician came to him he said because of that he abandoned his ministry because he's felt in his heart that if this man is elected his ministry will have a future so he said he went up to the mountain month after month month after month the politician would call him in the night they were praying for days months he said in the night they would pray two hours three hours he said he abandoned his ministry he would go to the mountain for one month see the politician assured him at the end of the day he won the politician never came back to acknowledge him rather he went to another church and did thanksgiving Today the pastor is stranded. His ministry has closed down. He has relocated to Lagos. He's swearing for that man. One day something mysterious will happen to him. You see, there are strange things occurring today. People don't understand where this is coming from. That's why many people cry and there's no help because the one you are crying to is the one you have offended. You didn't hear what I said. The one you are crying to is the one you have offended. I repeat again: the one you are crying to, the God you are crying to. Is the one whose servant you have offended at some point. There's a sister in church this evening. I saw her when I entered here. Her office, she was working in the newspaper company. The story is in the book. And then they were about to downsize somewhere in Yaba or so. She ran to a church that afternoon when the new announcement came and she knelt on the altar and vowed half of her salary if she's retained eventually the list came she was retained and she forgot now the company was having a lot of crisis so she was also planning to opt out and she was putting her CVs in different places yet no response she went everywhere job searching she was so desperate but now she was retained though the company was still shaky she never ever thought about the church she went and she vowed one sunday she walked into our church now I remember for our church and I gave a prophetic word I said there's somebody here you made a vow and this thing is affecting you it's affecting everything about your work it's affecting you if you can redeem that vow in the next couple of days God is going to visit you and she redeemed the vow guess what that week a powerful company offered her a new job that job took her around the world there are many of you here you are holding back your destiny 
you have aggrieved the altars of God. You go to a church, they are building, you are the first to pledge. If God give me this job, I'm going to take care of the decking. I'm going to buy zinc. I'm going to buy this. Lord, if you do it for me, I'll buy you altar. I'll buy you microphone. And the job come. The last place, a part of call is the house of God. This explains why a lot of people are going through a lot of crises. Broken promises. Broken promises. Lord, I will serve you. I will serve you. You are unemployed. You are vowed. I will serve you. My leg will not miss any service. Now you've gotten the job. What has happened? You are never in church. In fact, when you see your cell leader calling you or your pastor, you don't pick the call. And the spirit that heard, the spirit of God that heard you say those things is grieved. That's why now you can't explain. Everything is scattered. People are coming. You are going to con contract fresh pastors. People are praying with you now. Nothing is working. You need to pacify the aggrieved spirit of God by redeeming that which you have promised. Can I hear a loud amen to that? Amen. It's not a popular message. But many destinies are tied to this. Many destinies are grounded because of what I'm teaching tonight. That's scriptural. Many destinies are grounded because of this. Broken promises. Many destinies. Hands are being laid. Oil is being poured. But destinies are grounded. How will you call the one that you have offended? Lift up your hands. Say, God of heaven. Every promise I made. Open my spirit to it. Help me to redeem it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every promise I found. I made at any point. Lord help me to redeem it. In the name of Jesus. One minute quickly ask God for his mercy. Open your mind. Say Lord open my mind. Open my mind. Open my mind. To any vow I made. Within and outside this vicinity. Open my mind to it Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Now these are the signs. These are some of the signs. When you are experiencing angelic reaction as a result of broken promises. One of the signs is unanswered prayer in spite of long period of prayer and fasting. Unanswered prayers in spite of long period of prayers and what? Fasting. You can't explain the brother is fasting, he's praying, but his prayers are not answered. Why? The vow he made five years ago, he has not redeemed it. Unanswered prayer in spite of long period of fast prayer and fasting. Problems escalating each time prayers are offered. Have you heard people say things like this? Say, the more I pray, it's like I pour petrol into fire. You know why? Because the angels that are supposed to bring the prayers to pass, they're angry. Are you following me? So you are praying, rather the answers to come, it's escalating the problems. Closed doors everywhere is another sign. Closed door, everywhere closed. Constant defeat in life is another factor. Defeat by demonic forces in dreams. Always experiencing defeat. The prophecy is not coming to pass. You go to a place, they prophesy. They will call your name, give your phone number, address. Everything is precise. Yet it's not coming to pass. Check. There are promises in your life you have not kept. Broken promises. Broken promises. Check. That's the purpose of this message tonight. That's the purpose of this encounter tonight. As you redeem that which you have promised. As you redeem that which you have promised. There's going to be a visitation. I said there's going to be a visitation. In the name of Jesus. The daily outbreak of new problems. Daily outbreak of new problems. Daily outbreak of new problems. Whether it's angels, evil demons. They have gone to make pledges, promises. A woman made a pledge. That should be dro dropping a goat in the water. On behalf of the child that this goddess of the sea had given to her. She did it for a while.
Untold financial hardship, broken relationship, spiritual attacks. The answers to these unexplained occurrences can be found in a grief spirit and how to neutralize them. Written by a seasoned author and apostle of recovery, Dr. Anthony Oko. To order your copy, call or text Pastor Alex on 0809 444-5025 A Grieved Spirit and How to Neutralize That is the book you've been waiting for. Always remember, recovery is possible. Madam, stand up. Do you know how to fast? You will go and fast for call your children together. Okay, sir. Hmm? Okay, sir. To fast for their father. Your children and your wife must fast for you and pray. I've never I, you came to drop off in my hand and I said stop. There's a confusion being sponsored into your home, sir. Your heart is very tender. Your weakness is affection. Affection manipulates you like a toy. You're a good man. You're not a bad person. Have I cancelled you before? You, you are very weak for... You're an emotional person. So, your children will fast and pray for you, sir. This time you need your children to stand with you because this is what is going on right now your finances is under manipulation and this is because of a second party in your home is it true it's true it's true i have nothing to lose sir please this is very important because um Too many things are dying in your hand, sir. Too many things are dying in your hand. And it's not good for the age both of you are in. This is the period of what they call consolidation. A man and a woman at this age, I guess when you're in your 40s. Please, this is the period of consolidation. Any mistake you make this season, sir, old age will not be interested. I'm very sincere with you. There are many men today, eh? They wish they, somebody could repair their head when they were in their 40s. That's what they call midlife crisis, and that is what you are going through, sir. Please, I beg you, because you love God and you love your family. But there is a party. There's a woman we need to pray out of your life. There's an influence from her, and this is not good at all. It's not good at all. Because as I speak to you right now, this thing is so strong. It's like a stronghold. Sometimes you look at your wife, you wonder what is she doing in your home. That's the truth, sir. Please, you are a God, godly man. This thing should not... I know it looks embarrassing. Church, do you know I don't talk about family matters? There are times I say, see me privately. If church cannot solve our problem, where are we going to get a solution from? No, now I read Bible, talk about different matters, and the Spirit of God is not allowed to come into issues. And then this man came, you drop off in my hand. I said, stop. It was spontaneous. I reacted to the Holy Spirit. Now let me pass. The Holy Spirit says stop and tell this woman and her children to pray. Because sometimes we must recognize a common enemy to our home and fight it as one. Because may God not allow us to be attached to the things that will kill us. Loving it dearly. Enjoying it. But then our graves have been dug by it. And then by the time our eyes have cleared, so much damage has been done. And then you know the sad thing? This strange woman leaves. What happens? This woman and the man, they now face the ashes of the collapsed institution. And then the children now drop out of school. So many dead because the church was not sensitive to pick out such prophetic insight. Our Father, we pray for this home. Whatever you, whatever you are sorting out, sort it out quickly. Amen. Whoever is in, whatever is interfering in this matter, oh God, who that has come 
whatever influence from the waters, from the sea, whatever is holding the, 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 the strength of the heart of this man to break this home, we break such influences in Jesus' name. Amen. We break such influences in the name of Jesus. Amen. We break such influences in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever died financially, whatever investment, whatever shop or business or financial institution or structure that is suffering under the, the demonic attack of these issues, we command it to break, to break, to break, to break, to break, to break, to break. To break. Emotions, we break it in the name of Jesus. We release healing for this home, affection to be restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many of you know that there is the mercy side of God? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped. Because somebody had to arouse the mercy by shouting. Didn't Jesus see him when he passed? He saw him. But the man had to arouse the mercy. He had to arouse the oh, son of David, have mercy upon me. He's, and Jesus stood still. Bring him. Then he still asks him, what do you want me to do? Now, just as we arouse the mercy side of God, that is how we are also going to arouse the compassionate side of God, the grace side of God, and also the vengeance side of God. This week, your enemies will sleep, they will not wake up.